Throughout Ethan's career on YouTube, we see a lot of glimpses into his personal life and the rocky relationship he's had with his father, Gary. Gary already gets a bad rap because he's a boomer. But now Gary gets an extra bad rap because we see he's a complete asshole to his wife when he's upset over pointless things like people trying to have fun with beach balls at baseball games. Get your hands off me. This is one of the reasons why so many creators don't do live streaming unless it's a controlled environment such as Twitch, where they know they are going to talk about one thing and one thing only. Gaming are a specific game. No other topic they can be blindsided by. Ethan is one of the few YouTubers who has the integrity to go live almost every podcast episode now, which can be very risky if you don't keep your emotions in check and watch what you say. And we see even with how careful Ethan is, he still slips up all the time. The difference with him and other creators who've been exposed is he's willing to apologize, walk back what he said, and continue on doing his best. If people had the integrity Ethan has, they basically could be uncancelable. <coughs> Fleefy. So what happens when we place a boomer who's known for being argumentative stubborn, rude, unsympathetic, stingy, money-hungry, and overall complete asshole in one of these live situations? Well... Get your hands off me. As we see, they get exposed real quick. Now let's not go in too hard on Gary all at once, though. After all, we as humans all have our challenges with emotions. The problem we run into with Gary is we don't all physically slap our wives on live stream over something as measly as beach balls at a baseball game. Damn. I'm calm. Gary comes from the generation who are known for being controversial and very judgmental of others, the generation that is always right, that knows best, especially with their children. Hence the term, okay boomer. Okay boomer. Gary is a great example of how boomers can definitely be wrong in a situation, and when boomers start to realize they aren't as right as they think they are, well, they resort to their animalistic behaviors such as violence or physical harm. Get your hands off me. Kind of like how an ape would act if they didn't get their way. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Gary also comes from the generation that didn't have as many resources as the younger generations do today. Hence why a lot of them are stubborn and try to go about challenges in their own way instead of seeking help from others. This is the part where boomers could really learn from. Younger generations have really paved the way for normalizing things like mental health being just as important as physical health, taking medication for mental health if it works for you, and seeing a therapist. Ethan has talked about doing all these things multiple times on his podcast. This is something you never really hear a boomer doing. It wasn't normal to do those things back in Gary's day. It's a shame too because we see if Gary had been doing these things, he wouldn't be making such a big deal over something so insignificant. Ethan has talked about this incident multiple times throughout the podcast. He first brought it up about two years ago in the episode in July 2019 titled, Ethan's Dad Booed at a Ball Game on the Highlights channel. So I start, I had a flashback of when I would go, my dad used to take us to ball games all the time. He's sports obsessed. He's a mega fan of the Dodgers. So he's such a grouch that he thinks the volleyball distracts from the game and so when one comes his way he grabs it and stabs it what? and puts it at his feet and he does that with his family there i'm a small kid they're trying to be at the ball game and have fun oh he did this back in the day he's always done this gary has to fortify his argument in the beginning as well by exaggerating the intensity of the beach ball situation because he knows deep down he has to justify his actions since this is a relatively harmless tradition at baseball games a common boomer tactic when trying to justify one's wrongdoings someone inflated and just started smashing off people's heads and off of their eating trays i really <laughs> doubt that was happening you're you're trying to justify it ethan immediately counters gary's attempts to embellish the story in the beginning by expressing his doubt it was that serious of a situation. The hard evidence against Gary at this point is him being booed by everyone. This is the part that Gary can't justify, so he tries to use smaller arguments by exaggerating how much damage beach balls are causing and invalidate people's vocal opinions of him by saying things like, oh, it wasn't that many people booing. Then he pulls one of who knows how many comments that fits his narrative and quotes it to validate his actions. I did get uh, someone replied to me and they said, as a kid, I would boo you. As a parent in society, I applaud you. Even Donna chimes in against Gary to shut down his example by saying, that was one out of 125,000 people. That was one comment out of 120,000 uh, views that I've, I've gotten so far. <laughs> Gary immediately attempts to delegitimize Donna's comment by making it seem like she is exaggerating her numbers and has no further proof except by just saying, no, that's not what it was. You, you honestly, you think that's the ratio, Donna? One to 120,000? Yes. I mean, 
people thought it was funny. No, no, that's not. And also at 101 58 seconds, Gary continues to just say, no, people were not still booing by the time you got back. Were people booing when you came back? Yes. No, they weren't still booing. They were. But immediately after Gary says, no, people weren't still booing, he shoots himself in the foot by admitting he responded to people booing with a bring it hand gesture. When people started booing, this is what I did. Bring it, bring it, you know? You didn't do that. I did. She was like a He's mentally man. ill. My father is mentally ill. Once again, Gary's attempting to downgrade his actions by saying, well, look, it could be worse. I could have brought a machete. And it was only a measly little pen that couldn't possibly do any harm to anyone. I get a sense that Gary is a little embarrassed to use a pen to get his way with a beach ball because normally people don't resort to pens as weapons. For some reason, Gary thinks the ball being on the floor is much less worse than being between his legs. On top of it, the ball was between his legs. No, it wasn't. Had, it was on the floor. It was, it was on, on the, the ground floor between, between my legs. feet. Boomers are accustomed to not being held accountable for their actions. They grew up in an era where there was no internet, hardly any visual recording devices, and no social media. A lot of people talk about how bad the internet can be because it can be such a toxic place, which is true. But the internet and technology have its pros as well. It has played a huge role in holding people accountable. It was a lot easier to get away with things back in the day without everyone having a camera in your face and record you at a moment's notice. So for people like Gary, it's hard for him to justify his actions when instead of having five people in his life tell him he's wrong, he now has thousands of people plugging their opinions to him through the internet. And for Gary, well, this isn't good news because they are opinions siding with his son and not Gary. It's understandable Gary would act like this because the last thing you want to hear is how you did something wrong from people half your age or your son. Naturally, when you're that old, you feel pretty wise with your decisions since you've been around for so long, so it's a hard thing to accept. Especially when you're not accustomed to thousands of people voicing their opinion against you. Ethan has expressed multiple times the issues with his dad growing up and how embarrassing it was to go to the ball games where Gary would cause a scene every time. He talks about how someone almost fought Gary because of it. But this isn't just at ball games. You can see this greatly affected Ethan and Gary's relationship growing up and Ethan still has a lot of resentment towards his father for his actions. The stubbornness from boomer parents have always been off the charts. They will never admit to doing something wrong. This is the problem with Gary. Never in a million years will he admit he was in the wrong in this situation no matter how many people voice their opinion that he is. One of the few ways boomer men know how to release their anger is either by first violence, the most primitive method, and if that fails, they resort to being verbally passive aggressive. We see an example of this from Gary when he knows he's losing the argument and proposes an idea to Ethan. Okay, here, Ethan, I have an idea. I'd like to propose. The next Dodger game, come along with me. I'll recreate the stabbing. I know it's been very traumatic. It's affected your entire adult life. Maybe if we can recreate it, you can ponder it, think about what happened, see it really isn't that bad. Donna describes the situation as too funny and doesn't realize how traumatized Ethan really is from dealing with his father all these years. Ethan even tells Donna that she's an enabler for Gary and she completely ignores him and just keeps talking. Ethan, it was too funny. It's, and, it's and, not and funny, it, you enable him. Oh it's horrific. Afterwards, mm -hmm. And it was, was uh... Gary starts to hit the boiling point when Donna, in his own words, steals his joke because that was his one shot at making light of the situation by saying, oh yeah, this guy confronted me but didn't want to fight me because it would be elder abuse. Mom, mom is going to steal my joke that I told her earlier about him looking at me and saying, well, uh, do I want to punch this guy or do I want to get arrested for elder abuse? You know, so. Gary's getting so flustered with his story being derailed and his joke, Donna actually has to tell him to calm down because now he's getting legitimately upset and it's becoming very apparent on live video for all to see. Calm down, Gary. Gary even starts to patronize Ethan when he says, please, Governor, continue. Very rude. Please, Governor, continue. Donna even starts to get upset with Gary's attitude and can't help but display a small demonstration of violence by whacking the top of his hat. Dang it, Gary. Gary continues to doubt the entire way by making it seem like the guy who Donna is talking about didn't actually want to fight him, when I'm sure that is exactly what would have happened had Gary not been such an elderly man. I really think that if Dad had been a younger man, you know, it might have been confrontational. Right. He's going to get kicked out of the ballpark for life 
for coming and hitting some guy who punctured a beach well, ball. This is where we see Gary can't put on the facade any longer for the video and he absolutely loses it. He's tried to play it cool this whole time by sticking to his story, relying on his arguments no matter what anyone says, and making sure he sounds like he's done absolutely nothing wrong. But unfortunately, he's had enough and can't resort to just his words to defend himself any longer, and actually takes a physical swipe at Donna when all she was trying to do is gently put her hands on his shoulders to calm him down. Damn. I'm calm. Get your hands off me. Oh my, oh my God. goodness. Ethan has to remind them they are on live video because of how embarrassing his dad's behavior has been. You guys, you're on a show right now. You know that, right? You're live on a show. And after Gary's freak out, we see Donna actually has to leave the room because of how ridiculous her husband is acting. Gary tries to play it off after Ethan's reminder by saying, What show? Kind of a tasteless joke, if you ask me. What show? God. You can see Ethan is trying to restrain himself by not yelling at his dad on the live video, but you know that's exactly what he wants to do. I assume he wants to yell at Gary for every incident he's ever caused during his childhood. AB mentions, this segment is tearing this family apart. This segment is tearing this family apart. <laughs> And you can hear Gary's evil laugh as he thinks AB is being sarcastic. Gary is absolutely clueless to the seriousness of his actions and complete lack of empathy for his wife and Ethan. Gary then denounces the validity of Ethan's argument by telling him he's not a true sports fan like himself, so therefore he doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, I, I appreciate that input from someone who is not a sports fan. A very weak argument. Gary tries to validate his whole argument by basically saying, I know what's best because I've been going to Dodger games since 1958. Again, another very weak talking point. Once again, it is being proven that Gary is completely outnumbered on this subject because the entire H3 chat is spamming tomatoes at him. Gary's unsympathetic response? Bring it. I, I, okay, I'm sorry to say, Dad, Gary, but there, there's a lot of tomatoes being thrown at you right now. <laughs> Now, Dad, Bring we're going to do a poll. <laughs> <laughs> we <have> okay. <laughs> All Ethan wants in this situation is for Gary to admit once that he's wrong about something. This stems from his childhood where Gary was never wrong about anything, I'm sure. Me and Ethan's situations are very similar. I'm sure a lot of you watching can attest that their boomer fathers share the same stubbornness as Gary. Had Gary just apologized that he may have been in the wrong in this situation and that he was sorry for putting Ethan in these scenarios as a kid, I think he could have instantaneously mended any childhood wounds Ethan may still be holding on to. It's unfortunate because I don't think Gary will ever get to that point without a lot of therapy. Good luck, Gary.